today I want to look at importing in CSVs and exporting them as well. There are several gems that can accomplish this, however today I want to just look at the basics and using pure Ruby to import in and export these files. So to get started, we'll add require CSV to our application.rb file in the config folder. And then in our routes file under the products, we're going to add in a collection that will listen on the post and we'll send this to the import. You'll notice that we're not creating a get for our CSV because we're actually going to listen on the index action for the format and we'll return a CSV file if the CSV format is specified. So in our index action, you'll see that we'll have a respond to block, which just checks the format specified. So by default, you'll have your HTML, but we're going to add in a format CSV, and then we're going to pass in send data, and then we're going to call add products to CSV, and then we'll create the CSV method within our model. In our model, we have our to CSV method. You'll see that we're calling CSV generate, passing in a block, and then the first thing that we're doing is we're setting the column names. We're then looping through each one of the records, and then we're passing in the values for each one of the attributes that we've listed. And keep in mind that this will capture the ID column, the created at, the updated to, and anything else as well that you have on this model. If you do want to restrict certain fields from exporting, you can make this a whitelist option where if you specify certain attributes, then those will be exported. So if we just set another option here, and let's just call this fields, and then we're going to set this equals to the column name. And by setting it to the column's name, we will then by default set it to columns name if you have not entered in any fields. And then instead of calling columns names and passing that into our header row, we'll pass in fields. And then for actually generating the data, instead of calling the values at, we'll call values at the fields. So back in our controller on our two CSV method, we can actually now pass an array and list each one of the attributes that we want to have exported. So our index action will look something like this where we have a link to, we're passing in a name, and then we're setting our product's path, but we're passing in the format CSV. And this format CSV can also be written as a symbol, and then we're just setting some styling. If you go to your product's index action, you can now click on export CSV. You'll see that it downloads it. And if you open it, you only see our three columns that we had specified and the appropriate values. So now let's go ahead and create our import functionality. So I'm going to wrap our export CSV in a form group, and then I'll just pass in a form tag where we're setting this to the imports products path. If you remember from our routes that we created a collection on the post, then I'll add in the import CSV submit tag, and then we'll pass in a file field. And do take note on our form tag that we are passing in multi-part true, so it'll handle the file uploading. So within our products controller, we'll create our import action, and then you'll notice that we're calling product.import. So we're going to need to create another import method on our product class, and then we're passing in the file params. And then in our products model, we'll create a import method on the class. And you'll see that we're looping through each line of the CSV file that we specified and setting the first row to headers. So this might be a bit more performant on the memory since we're looping through the CSV file each row at a time and we're not storing everything into memory. So we'll set our products hash to the row to hash and then we'll find our create by and then here I'm just setting it to the products name and the products category. So if our CSV file had an updated name or an updated category to a particular record, then it would actually create a whole new record. And that may not be desirable, so you'll want to put in the necessary logic that fits your application here. And if you do have a unique ID for existing records, you may want to pass that in here instead. Now keep in mind if you do this, you'll want to give the client some way to export those lists of ID numbers, so you would want to include that in your whitelist when exporting the CSV file. And then we're calling in the product.update attributes and passing in the product hash. So let's open up our CSV and test this out. So I'll change the price on the mediocre shoes on line 2 from 632 to 750. Then our durable linen pants, I'll lower the price to 69.99. And then let's also start selling some loco tacos, and we'll set this price to 29.99. So back within our application, we'll choose a new file, and I'll pass in the product CSV, 
and then I will import. So here you'll see that our price of our mediocre copper shoes has been increased to $750, and our durable linen pants has been decreased to $69.99. If we scroll down, you'll see that we now have our Loco Tacos for sale for $29.99. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.